What's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? It's Bastian here, coming at you from the man cave. I've had brain waves, guys. I've had brain waves. Kekak Jolil and I, we've been chatting a lot about Dragon Ball CCG. We usually do. That's that's our thing. And um, we're trying to spice up some scene in Hungary so uh, Dragon Ball card players can get together and, uh, and have a blast playing and it would be awesome if that would happen. I was also re-watching some of my old videos. Jesus Christ, cringeworthy. Not that these are a lot better, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Listen to yourself a couple of years back. Um, struggling with English. <laughs> crazy, crazy, all days. So anyway, uh, if you watched the gameplay video that KKX Jodil and I have made, then you should know that it was the Android uh, deck that won that battle. And not through sheer force, but actually by decking out the uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku deck. And if you haven't watched it, then watch it now. Wherever it comes up. But then again, I thought that, hey, I actually have a Bojack's Gang deck. And that's pretty sweet with with you know the fierce ability, which um, if your team wins a uh, uh, battle, it can be just a regular victory or an outstanding victory. You basically get to discard cards off the top of your opponent deck, depending on how big the fierce value is added together between all the characters in your um, attacking team. So there I was thinking, uh, a deck that isn't even geared towards decking out uh, the opponent, wins the game by decking out the opponent. What if I actually gear a deck towards decking out an opponent? So without any further ado, ladies and gents, please let me bring you the updated um, Ginyu Force. Ginyu Force? What am I talking about? Bojack's Gang deck. Or we could also call it Cooler's Gang, or we could call it Fierce Warriors. I really don't know what to call it yet. I, I kind of like Cooler's Gang, to be uh, quite honest with you guys. But anyway, let's see what's in here. So, let's start with turn zeros. Let's start with the characters. That's what I tend to do most of the time. Uh, so we got three King Colts here. We run the King Cold um, opening because we want to be able to search our deck for a free Zoro Cooler, put it on top of our deck. And basically that's card advantage, if nothing else. But also um, it gives us a very good start for uh, setting up, uh, which is what we are doing with this deck in the first few turns. We're of course setting up till about turn three, turn four. Where the um, when well, hell breaks loose basically. So we got um, the ability to search out Frieza or Cooler, and we have both of them in the deck, so we're going to be utilizing that power. We also have the valid um, ability to heal a Cooler or a Frieza with King Cold for one Chi. So King Cold is our uh, opening uh, warrior. And we also run three Yamchas. I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking the same. Why would anybody run Yamcha? Well, you would because he's actually a pretty sweet card. For a turn zero, you get a 3010. Obviously, set five was the set that brought this guy. For us, uh, we wouldn't even have imagined a Yamcha like this before that. But what's so important about this Yamcha is the fact that when he comes into play, we can search our deck for a female warrior. Now, guess what? Zangia is a female warrior. So, depending who we have in our opening hand, if we have a King Cold, we search for a Frieza. If we have a Yamcha, we search for a Zangia. And our turn 2 or turn 3 drop is already sorted if we haven't got one in our hand already. Really good card advantage for both of these cards, both of these turn 0 drops. Also, Yamcha has backup, so if we decide to discard it for whatever reason, we still have access to it 
as long as access to him as long as he's in the chi. Uh, and on top of that, he also gives female warriors in his team plus O plus one. So if we stack Zangia behind him in a team formation, then Zangia will actually be a three support, not a two support, which what she normally is. And these these are our zero drops. This is it. We only run these two guys. A uh, full playset of both. They both give us a really good um, opening, regardless which one we have. They're both 3-0s, so they're both good at attackers as well. Turn 1, we have uh, the full playset of Kogu. Excellent card. Um, some people might underrate Kogu. I think he's actually... Just as good as any of the other Bojax gang cards. All the Bojax gang warriors are extremely good, by the way. So Kogu has ally Bojax gang, which means that you can basically put him into your team formation for free. With Kogu, you can have a fourth player in your team, and that is already pretty good. Uh, and then he has backup, so again, you can have access to him if he ends up in your chi. And he also grants plus one plus zero to all the other Bojack Gang warriors in this warriors team. He's a clear uh, cut support warrior. You would not really put him to be the lead warrior unless you know you have to, unless you're forced to do that. But he basically, think about him as a two three, um, because uh, basically it's a it's a free three support if you. You <laughs> understand that. There, I was talking about struggling with English, and I still am. <laughs> okay, we run one freezer. The previous build was running two freezers. You don't need two freezers. If you get the King Cold out early, you search for this drop, uh, two drop freezer. If you don't, you search for cooler. We are also running coolers in this deck, so you really don't need more than one freezer. But he's an excellent card. And uh, an excellent support warrior as well with a 3-3 ability. Sorry about that, that was my phone. Should have put that on silence. And also for free once per turn, you can um, give one of your warriors plus 1 plus 0. And if your team would be defeated, then that warrior would go into your discard instead of going into the chi. But that's a small price to pay, really, in my opinion. So an excellent support warrior card. That's our first uh, two drop. Then we run two Dr. Wheelos. Um, he's a really good drawer engine. He's a really good chi engine. Yes, you do have to discard a card, but actually you can only do that every second turn because you have to be the attacker for it. But he also has plunder, so you can steal some of your opponent's Dragon Balls away. That's always an ability that can be pretty useful. Yeah, he's... Um, you probably would want to have your two drops as support warriors, but then again, uh, he's more of a... Uh, is more of a card that you use for its abilities rather than um, really wanting him to be a massive, massive support warrior. So he's a 4 1 2 1, which is okay. We're not using the tool uh, draw ability, we're really just using him to be a um, card advantage engine in the deck. Uh, two of his is a good spot to be with him. And finally, our last uh, two drops are. Uh, two copies of Bujin. Bujin, another really good Bojax Gang warrior, as I said, they all are. Um, he can be both an attacker and a supporter. Um, with a 3-2, obviously, he's got pretty good stats. 1-1, um, one, one, not so great, but then again, um, he's, he's your two drop, so, you know, don't expect too much of him. He's got backup. Uh, also, when your opponent uses a reinforcement technique, that warrior gets minus or minus one, which is it's really tricky and really catch your opponent out. You just always have to keep an eye on your opponent's techniques, whatever they're playing, to be able to cash in on that ability. And if he has a Dragon Ball, then uh, you can also manipulate your opponent's chi, so you can actually get rid of one of the techniques or events that your opponent has in their chi, which is brilliant. It's really, really, really good. Um, obviously, that is almost... Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's going to set your opponent back by a turn, but being able to um, 
take away their chi is always a powerful ability. This is why um, uh, Siphon uh, is also such a great technique card. Our turn 3, uh, we only have two Zangyas here on the turn 3 slot. She is obviously the one who you search out with uh, Yamcha. If Yamcha comes down on turn 0, Yamcha will also give her plus 0 plus 1. Uh, if they're in the same team, but she's also a very good uh, uh, front man, uh, front warrior, a main attacker with a 4-2. She has backup. She also has Fierce 1, which is obviously going to be our key um, ability in this deck. Um, so our characters from Zangia onwards, they all have Fierce in the deck, which is very important. So already in turn 3, if we win, we are milling our opponent's deck out. Also, opposing male warriors get plus or minus one. Now, guess what? Most people don't really run female characters in this game. So this is a catch-all type of situation. Um, we can pretty much immediately dish out um, plus or minus one to uh, two warriors in our, in our opponent's uh, teams. Um, and also... When uh, any of our Bojax Gang Warriors becomes the user of a Technique card, uh, we can give one of our uh, Bojax Gang Warriors plus one plus one. So she not only gives uh, gives takes away um, power points from our opponent's team, but also uh, pumps our own team. So, what more could you wish for? By the way, Zangya is like an upgraded starter deck, Krillin. Um, she's a really, really good card. Excellent card. Turn 4. Of course, we need to have two Bidos. Um, also, Fierce 1. Also, Backup. Excellent stats. Even if he gets injured, he still remains a 5 0. Um, pretty much only Android cards do that that they don't drop some of their combat value uh, when they get injured. But Beto, Beto keeps it, so that's pretty awesome. And of course Beto has been errated. Uh, he actually gives a plus so plus one to all the other warriors uh, in the team that he's in. So um, he will pump everybody behind him who's supporting him. So that is also very powerful. He's like the second in command to, uh, to Bojack. Excellent card. So we already have one, two warriors that have fierce one. Our third warrior, also for turn four, we run two coolers. And cooler is going to be um, basically another essential part of this deck. This is why I called it Cooler's Gang. Uh, we run two cooler, the third forms. Um, he has evolution five to cooler, the fourth form, which is a card that was printed in the fusion set. Um, he also has fierce one. Uh, making him our third warrior who has the ability to mill our opponent's deck. When uh, he comes down, you can search your planet for a cooler fourth warrior and put it on top of your planet. So we can either search for a King Cold or we can search for our fourth form cooler because of course we are running one of that guy in here. And he also grants plus one plus so to all the other warriors in his team, making him an excellent attacker and also an excellent supporter. So we can really mix and match whatever we want to use cooler the third form for, but he's an absolutely brilliant card as well. Now you couldn't really build a mill deck without turtles. And of course, we do have two copies of Turtles for turn five. Um, he has toughness, and whenever he's sent out to battle, which is his valid ability down there, then our opponent must um, discard a card from uh, the top of his deck. Um, so you don't even need to win with Turtles to be milling our opponent so that is an excellent excellent ability and also when he comes into play we can search our deck for an event and put it into our hands so we got a lot of cards that search cards we have dr Wilo that also uh, gives us card advantage of course we have a couple of events as well so we got loads of cards that fill our hand up and bring us the right cards at the right time which is super super crucial for any deck guys card advantage is very important so even though turtles doesn't have four fierce he still mills a card even he's even better than the fierce warriors 
Uh, he only needs to be sent out to attack. And then Big Daddy B, <laughs> Bojack. We have two copies of Bojack, the, the ringleader of the gang. He has toughness, he has fierce two. He gives plus one, plus one to all the other Bojack's gang uh, warriors that are in play. Um, making him, you know, just as good as uh, King Piccolo or Supreme Commander Red, um, where they pump everybody in their, um, uh, in their, um, uh, sort of like their gang. So he also has Fierce 2, which is absolutely brilliant. And if you happen to have a Dragon Ball on him every turn, if you discard a Bojax Gang Warrior card from your hand, you can also put a um, Growth Coin on Bojack. So he also has the ability to pump himself, which again is brilliant. And his stats are really good, 6-2, 4-2. So he doesn't lose a hell of a lot, even if he gets injured. Yes, he does stop, uh, he does stop giving out the plus one, plus one. But um, at the end of the day, he still has fears. And then last but not least, we have one cooler, the fourth form. Uh, he has fears too. If you ask my opinion, I think the third form is better. Uh, but why we run the fourth form in here is because he has the Fierce 2 ability. He's a really good attacker with 7-3. If he gets injured, he's pretty meh. But also with a Dragon Ball for 1 Chi, we can basically DOTC um, a character out of our um, opponent's team. Uh, if it has a turn cost of 3 or less, which is pretty good, that can that can immediately give you uh, a victory. You know, if you take a good, good really strong supporter out, uh, you take a 3-3 three, three out, you know, or somebody who, who pumps the team or something like that, uh, that could be really, really, really useful. You can only do it in a strategy phase, you have to be the attacker, but it's still really, really uh, useful. And the cherry on the top, of course, evolution is a uh, something you can do for free. So never mind the two chi costs there. Well, most of the time we don't really want to pay that. What we want to do is we want to drop third form cooler on turn four, and then on turn five, actually a turn earlier, we will drop the fourth form for free. Um, and then also in the same turn we can either drop a turtles or we can drop a Bojack, depending what we want down in that particular turn here. Obviously, they're both very good options to go with. But this gives us a free drop. It gives us Fierce 2, so it's an upgrade on the Fierce 1. And also, we can search him out with him when he comes into play. Excellent, excellent stuff. The only thing is, obviously, sacrificing that plus 1 plus so that he grants for his team is something you need to consider. But uh, overall... I think it's more than worthwhile to run the fourth form uh, in here. And this concludes our warriors. Uh, 25 to be precise. You can't have more than 25 warriors in your deck, obviously. Um, for the events, we have three UFO landing. Uh, really, really good. Our main effort, of course, is to get um, uh, three Bojax Gang characters down. Of course, then we are able to draw an additional card uh, at the end of our turn, which is uh, very, very useful. Really good card advantage. Very cheap to bring down the UFO landing as well. Now I was toying with the idea of maybe putting in another um, Knees. Uh, he's another cooler uh, force, a cooler family character, just to be able to have a King Cold down, a Knees, and a cooler third form to also be able to tap into UFO landing. But I think with Dr. Wheelow, with the additional card selection uh, that we get with Yamcha, we can almost guarantee a Zongya. I think we can easily get down three uh, Cooler 4, uh, not Cooler 4, sorry, three uh, Bojax Gang Warriors. Uh, but then again, it's up for debate. I still need to do playtesting with, with this updated version. But I think three UFO landings are pretty solid, and I, and I honestly believe that it's going to work out and give us the right card advantage that we need. And then, of course, if you want to have a good, effective meal deck, you need to run Cold Legacy. 
I stated this before and I stand behind that statement. Code Legacy is definitely in the top five um, event cards. Uh, probably should do a video on that as well. But anyway, time limit three, same as UFO landing. Um, but that means, you know, they stay in game for like the, the turn you play and then another three turns. So that's pretty good. You get a lot of um, activation out of it. Uh, for X number of cards in your opponent's discard, you get the following effect. So if you have five, at least five, you get f all your characters get fierce one. So it almost immediately starts to ramp itself. Uh, when you get to five, you will very quickly get to ten, which will grant plus one, plus one to all your warriors, which is just crazy. And then if there is twenty plus, then all your characters get trash one. So if you get this card down. <laughs> Just annihilate your opponent. And it's really, really good because all our guys have Fierce One here. So those are going to be fueling our Cold Legacy. You can search out the Cold Legacy with Turtles. Just sending out Turtles is going to start building our opponent's deck. It's almost as if these two cards were designed by the same person. Uh, like if I had to hazard a guess, I'm pretty sure whoever came up with one of the cards decided to do the other one. I think maybe Cold Legacy was done first, and then they were like, oh, well, why don't we make Turtles the card that really supports him, and then everybody's going to run these guys together. They are just uh, extremely, extremely uh, good in working together. Um, anyway, we only run these um, uh, six uh, events, and then we have three powerful heritage. Uh, the best... Uh, alien pump technique uh, alongside Raccoon Bomber, but of course Raccoon Bomber can only be used by Ginyu Force. So Powerful Heritage uh, grants plus 3 plus 0 for the user for a really cheap cost of 2 chi, uh, turn 3 onwards. But if we use it with a Saiyan, and of course we do have Turtles, uh, Turtles actually gets plus 2 plus 2 out of it, all the Saiyans get plus 2 plus 2 out of it, because it has the expert uh, ability down there. So our Turtles with a powerful heritage is actually uh, an 11-0 for that turn, which again is just crazy good. Um, we don't need too many pumps. I'm quite happy with the three powerful heritage because we run three energy swords. And this card has been dissed a lot. Um, I have been running it in this uh, Bojax gank build for the past what four years now um not that i played a lot with this deck certainly not recently but with the additional uh, cooler uh in the deck well i look at this card i'm thinking like okay i'm gonna try and use it with cooler just to give cooler thrash one and all the rest is a bonus but even the the bonus bit is so good it's basically uh either a dignity of the conqueror or a Mashenko, um, whichever your opponent chooses, they're not gonna, uh, they're not gonna, you know, be able to um, get a good choice out of this. Um, they can either give one damage to the target, or they can exclude the target from the team formation. And of course, you play this in the action phase before uh, all the um, before all the uh, actual. Uh, Math, maths are <laughs> compared um, this really can either way you know if, if you exclude a warrior then most likely you are going to win it could also be the difference between a victory and an outstanding victory and then the thresh one ability will be even more imperative because of course thresh one only works with outstanding victory if the difference in maths is uh, greater than four um, or if they give one damage, then that could also mean that, well, all of a sudden, you know, your guy that was giving three support is now only giving one support, so they're down by two. So we run three here, but then again, as I said, the primary function is the Thresh one for our cooler family. This means we can use, um, anybody can use Energy Sword in a deck, but it's even better if King Cold uses it or our cooler. And then we run one Roar, just to have a counter. I, I would also like to run a Dignity of the Conqueror, potentially at this spot, but I think Energy Sword kind of does that job for us. 
Cooler fourth form has the ability to also do pretty much the same, exclude a warrior, although um, a bit circumstantial and only with a turn cost of three or less, but still, still does it. Uh, Roar is a um, take it all technique. It uh, negates anything without any um, obstructions. Of course, it has to be a technique. So one of, I think, it's almost like a staple uh, in an alien deck, you really should want at least one if you're running aliens uh, because Roar is just that good. And then, you know, if you don't use it or you don't think you need it, then, you know, just charge it into Chi. But I think yeah, it's a very good card. And then finally, one of the other reasons why we don't exactly need the Dignity of the Conqueror is because we have something that also does the job for us, Exceptional Power. This is a card that I honestly think most people don't even realize exists. But um, for those of you who did, well, um, of course, you have understood how powerful it is. And if you haven't, then you can have a look now. We do have a very strict requirement. It must be cooler using it. So I really don't know why they gave it a turn cost of one. Uh, you're not gonna get a cooler down realistically in turn one, even if you have uh, Guldo in your deck. Guldo's a uh, two turn cost, and then you still need to get in an outstanding victory to be able to play your cooler in turn three. It's, it's not possible. It's, it's not possible anyway. Um, so, anyway, in your action phase, um, the printed power of target warrior becomes zero zero until the end of turn. That printed power is both. Um, uh, healthy and injured status and mind you this also is a counter which means uh, only counters can react to a technique on the uh, on the chain immediately I mean you know chain exists in this game of course you can chain together the uh, uh, techniques but you can use a counter immediately um, after a um, another technique was played. But it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. What you need to make sure is exceptional power will be the last card that resolves. So um, when you have your cooler in play, you play your exceptional power and you basically render one of your opponent's warriors completely useless. And this isn't a beam technique. This isn't a... The only this is a special skill counter, so uh, besides a roar or a um, an expanding vibrations, nothing else can realistically stop this guy, um, making it extremely powerful, in my opinion. Now, one of the reasons why I upgraded to the additional cooler is because I really, really wanted to run this card for a long period of time. And I got to the point where I was thinking, well, you know, it's it's worthwhile trying it out. It's just too powerful. If you think about it, most of the um, uh, most of the unique and alien techniques, the ones that give out minuses, uh, they tend to be fairly expensive, and they tend to be um, they tend to be you know given out maybe minus two minus. So if you think about reversal. Or uh, if you're using siphon, uh, siphon of energy, uh, up to plus or minus three, depending how many chi your opponent has. Um, shockwave, depending from the turn cost, I think shockwave is pretty good to be to be fair. Um, what else is there? Four witches technique. Um, again, that's probably going to be a plus or minus three, at best. Now this guy will just completely zero your opponent's warrior. Yes, it's a massive requirement to have cooler. Most decks don't run cooler, and even the decks that do run cooler normally don't tend to run exceptional power. But because we have a lot of draw power, we're able to search out quite a few cards from our deck. Uh, we have actually a pretty good chance of having a cooler in the game at turn four onwards. And turn four is always always the most important turn in this game guys um, it almost always is that the turn four cards the turn four warriors are the the game changers uh, so actually having Zangya with fierce one uh, 
for a turn three card is 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 pretty rare. Um, Broly has a fierce one, and he's a turn three uh, Saiyan, but he's a bloody ultra rare, <laughs> for Christ's sake. Whereas Zongya is a common card. Um, so, um, you know, this deck has been highly regarded for the fact that it, it was really, really cheap to build back in the days. Um, because the only super rare you really realistically need for the deck is obviously the, the Bojacks. You really need the Bojacks. You really need, like, two. You could run three. Um, I probably should be running three, or a backup has arrived. But then again, I don't really like, um, um cards that don't impact the game immediately when they come down and backup has arrived is one of those cards yeah it's, it's nice to have it's nice to have but then again if you have a look most of our warriors have backup and if project doesn't come down on turn five then we still have two turtles that come down on turn five we can evolve into the fourth form of cooler in, on turn five so we have a lot of different options to go with to be our you know our finisher if we if we need that um, to happen um, but exceptional power I think it's an exceptionally good card if you play it in the right deck and I am super excited to um, to have it in this new build, this this refreshed uh, Bojax Gang, uh, Coolers Gang, Fierce Warriors deck um, to um, to have some some fun shuffling it up and, and playing with it. So guys, this is it. I will uh, finish it here. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you are still supporting Dragon Ball CCG and all the other uh, Dragon Ball card games out there particularly CCG, because it's a really cool game. Um, and this is it for today, guys. Bustin' signing out. Peace out, YouTube.